Have you ever wanted to trade comics with your friends? Well, because the year is now 2019 and most people don't buy comics anymore? Well, now's your chance with Mint Condition Comics by Neat. It plays two to six players, takes about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages, I'd say 10 and up. And in the game, you are literally trading comics. Now the comics are in card form, but you're attempting to gather sets of them, and you're going through deciding if you want this specific amount of comics here. And if not, you'll have to basically make it more lucrative for the next player, and you can go on to the next or the next set, trying to gather as many comics as you can to put them in issue order one two three four five and even maybe six by the end of the round when all of the comics have been distributed or whether you've taken them from the shop and whatnot you're just going to add up all your points based on your sets based on any secret powers that might have given you bonuses a bonus round bonus which will give you points for specific things you can do like if you have loose leaf comics or the most comics they'll give you points like that and then of course one of the comics is types of comics so is going to give you bonuses every round and it'll be different as well this game functions as a comic trading style game and it plays rather quickly your main objective here is tableau management and set collection but that's the basic idea of the game I as a kid really liked comics I had a bunch of my spider-man 2099s and some of the silver surfer and even some scarlet spider and it made me remind myself of when I used to go to high school and junior high for the most part and we trade our collection of comics with each other and of course the rules in this game are similar to the rules in those I can't simply give you a bad comic and you're going to give me a good one. In general, whenever I'm the trader, I'm going to have to give you something better for something that is less good on your side. But as the tradee, you can make some better bonus bonuses. And then of course the shop too. The shop is going to always get the better deal of whatever it is you're trading from the for the shop, for any of the comics in the shop. So in general, you're going to be in trouble, but there are certain changes to that as well. Anyway, enough prattling about comic books and my nostalgia for them. Let's go ahead and take a look down below, I'll show you what you get in the game, and then I'll tell you how to play, give my review, and then you can go ahead and check it out below in the link to buy the game if you want. So you guys ready to collect some mint condition comics because I know I am, and to do that you need to set up the game for the number of players, and depending on the number of players it is going to determine how many mint condition comics you're utilizing, and in this game you'll be playing three rounds. For a two-player game, you take out 25 cards. So I'll just go ahead and take out a stack that resembles 25. Set the rest of the deck and make sure, of course, you've shuffled before and after and place it down. Include two comics in a pile in three piles and put them next to each other in a horizontal area. And then put four comics face up from the top of the deck. We've got Captain Impossible, Malware, and Grimm. These are the comics that you can trade to the shop for if you need them into your tableau or your comic collection supply. These are all the different types of comics and and uh, how much they're going to be worth based on the numbers that you have. Now, of course, the numbers are only relevant if you have the different numbers in the set. So one, two, three, and four. But if you have another four or another one, those are not included in the set. They will form their own set or they'll be considered loose leaf comics. So the bigger the set, the more points you get. So for instance, with kids with powers, if you have two in that set, you'll get one point at the end of the round. If you have four, you'll get 10. And if you have all of them, that's worth 18. The same is said for all the rest of these. Uh, my guess is for the one that's in Japanese, Japanese, that if you have one it's a set and that's worth two and if you have both of them that's going to be worth eight in a set and loose leaf to be based on a uh, loose leaf or set uh, or, or sets are going to be definitely important to to note every player is also going to get a secret power and depending on the number of players is uh, how many powers you're going to deal out one to each player there's also bonus round uh, victory points so we'll go ahead and shuffle this deck as well and reveal the card and uh, we'll have the ultimate collection here and in addition you're going to randomly set aside one of these sets of comics and that specific comic is going to be worth more at the end of a round. And it's going to be worth, I think, six more points if you have the most, including cards that you may have, or comics that you may have loose leaf if you have multiple of them. So if you have five, even if you have multiples or duplicates, that's still going to count towards your total. The ultimate collection says that a player with the most comics at the end of the round is going to score an additional four points. And otherwise, you're ready to start the game. There's the comic shop trading card, which explains how you're going to trade with the comic shop. And of course, there's a way to trade with other players. But remember, the person who's trading in is usually going to get the worst deal than the person who is being taken from. Uh, that is the main setup for the game, Mint Condition Comics by Neat. Let's go ahead and go down below. I'll show you how to play a two-player game, at least a couple rounds of it. And then we'll come up and I'll discuss my review of the game and whether you should pick this one up.
So I've removed all the cards that won't be needed for a two-player game of Mint Condition Comics, and as you can see, the rest of it remains the same from our setup previously. We have our three separate stacks of two comics, which we're going to be collecting. We've got four for the shop. We've got the six different types of comics and the special bonus round uh, victory points that you can get, and that's for the most comics. Grim is the type of comic that will give you six points if you have the most at the end of the round, and uh, that's pretty much all you need to set the game up. There's the two secret powers, one for each player. They're secret, and you can only use them once per round, but they will be changed every round, so make sure you use them. Absorb power lets you copy another player's already revealed secret power, which is only useful if the other player in a two-player game uses theirs, which mind control, which will let you trade any one comic from your collection for any one comic in the comic shop. Shop. That's pretty useful. Okay, so these are secret. We have our two sides of the board ready to go. And the first player is going to always be the player who starts with the least points for each round, except for the first game in which maybe it's the person who has the most comics. Regardless, let's go ahead and begin. There's three phases to the game. First phase is you can trade with either other players or with the shop. But in the first turn of the game, you cannot do that. If you wanted to trade, though, you would have to trade with another player one for one, and it would have to be of equal value comic, because there's three types of comics. You have common, uh, you have the uncommons, and you have the rares. So you need to trade an uncommon for an uncommon, a common for a common, or a rare for a rare, or you could trade down. So if you have a rare, you can trade for one of their commons or an uncommon for one of their commons as well. And usually you want to trade loose leaf. The other rule too is if you are the trader, you can trade any of your comics to the other player. But if you're the trade E, anybody who's trying to trade with you, they cannot take comics that you already have in a set. You can only trade, let, trade for their loose comics. And loose comics are the ones that are just floating around without a set. And that is basically the main rules for trading as far as players go. And then for the shop itself, there's a comic trading shop card that explains how it works. You can trade any of your comics, two of them, for one comic in the comic shop. When you trade them, you'll put them into the comic shop, and you'll take one that you want from the comic shop. The other rule is you can trade one of your good ones for two of the comic shop. For instance, if you have one rare, you can take two uncommons, or an uncommon and a common, or if you have an uncommon, you can take two commons. If you don't want to do any of that or can't on your first turn, then you're going to move on to the next portion of the game, which is simply choosing to take comics from these stacks here. And the way it works is you first we'll look at the far right set and you can determine if you want these and you go okay malware and breakfast club malware is worth a certain amount of points at the end of the game and it's 18 is the highest you can get and breakfast club is worth up to 12 but it's easier to make points on these guys here also, you can tell if they're commons or not. So if you want these, you can take them and put them into your tableau in the yours forever. If you don't, make sure you don't reveal them, place them back down, add a new comic from the deck, and then look at the next stack of comics. Ooh, wow. Stellar and a malware. Uh, this is probably better. This is a rare and a common. So actually, I will take these. When you take these, you simply place them in front of you as part of your tableau. The reason I want these specifically is because Stellar, Guardian of the Stars, is worth four victory points at the end of the game and is a rare. After you've selected one of the stacks, you'll replace that stack with two new comics from the deck, and then you're going to be able to basically arrange your collection in any way you want. And in this case, it's really easy. You just place them just like that. After you've arranged your collection, the next player in turn order is going to get a chance to go, and they can go ahead and trade from the shop or with another player. Then they're going to look at the cards in the stacks from the far right. Do they want these? Eh, it's actually three cards, and you need to have the most at the end of the game to get four victory points. And now we have this extra cap impossible so maybe this player will actually take this and then they're going to go ahead and refill here and they're going to arrange their comic collection and it's just going to go back and forth like that it's pretty simple really and so this player doesn't want to trade with anything he could trade one of his two here he could trade a common for that common here or this rare for any of these cards really but it's not really worth this player's time to do so because this one is not going to give any benefit and this one's actually worth four victory points at the end of the game it's a singular set card which is pretty good so you want to keep that we'll just move on to this portion where we look at these captain impossible and a grim hmm that's a rare and an uncommon that's kind of hard to turn away even though they don't match our stellar and malware sets so we'll take these two here and then we'll put two new ones down and another thing to note, too, is if you look at certain ones like this, this is called an anthology comic, it counts as any number, because comics are defined by their number and color, as well as their rarity. Some of them have, have an ability, and this one says that you can use it as any number. So, for instance, if I had this one over here as well, I can make this a 1, or I can make it a 6. And you want to make sure you, you try and separate them in any way you can. 
Then, of course, it's the next player's turn, and the next player does want that, but it's a rare, and he literally cannot afford to take that from that player. And he could get these here, but these are uncommons and rares as well, which are pretty expensive. So we'll go ahead and just go here once again. Oh, okay, we got this Japanese one, which is pretty cool because you'll get two points for having one and eight for having both of them. And then we have another malware, which adds to our set here, which is a three. So we'll take both of these as well. And basically in increasing our uh, value in our comics here. And we'll put two new down. We'll organize our comics if we want, which we kind of already did. And we'll have this player go ahead and go now. Now, does this player have any trades they want to do with the shop? Well, he kind of wants these guys here. So uh, I could get rid of, hmm, I could get rid of my rare stellar and take the Captain Impossible Uncommon as well as one of these guys. So maybe I'll do that. So I'll go ahead and take this guy here just to show you how it works. Put, I, got, I got my Captain Impossible, and that's my number three, and then I'll take Malware as well because these are both less than the rare. And I got a four and a five Malware, and then I've got maybe a two and a three Captain Impossible. And the comic shop's just going to have whatever is left in it. And then I still get to go and go through this. I'm going to go and look at these. Ooh, a Grim and another Malware, number two. These are definite takes. And the reason why is because Grim here is going to give you plus two victory points at the end of the game because it's a rare and it's a first issue. And then, of course, another Malware, which is number two, which gives us, at the end of the game, if we still have these three, five victory points. Pretty dang useful. Put these here. Make sure you've set your comics how you'd like. And it's the next player's turn again. Next player doesn't want to trade and cannot trade with this player now because this player has no loose leaf comics. And nothing in here is really worth the, this player's time just yet. So we'll look at these two. <gasps> Free comic and a Malware. Malware number two. Heck yeah. So now I've got a two and a three and a five here which is good, as well as a free comic. So I can discard this card and take any one of these and put it into my stacks here. Do I want two points in a first edition Captain Impossible, or do I want four points with Stellar? That's a hard choice, but I think I'll go with Captain Impossible for right now. Placing that there for a free card in my set. Very, very nice. Put two of these guys back. Make sure I've organized everything I want. Look at my power. Remember, I can trade any one comic from my collection for any one comic in the comic shop. And in fact, I, I want to do that. I'm actually going to use my secret power so I can get rid of this breakfast club and take Stellar because it's worth a lot of points at the end of the game. And that's the basic idea of the game. You're going to keep going back and forth, back and forth until this entire deck runs out and all the comics have been gotten rid of. This other player will hopefully use their secret power, which allows them to basically do the same thing, which is mind control. And after everything has been distributed, uh, you're going to add up victory points. And I'll just go ahead and show you how victory points is added because uh, let me just give you an idea of what it looks like at the end of a round. And in this case, you'll be actually playing three rounds of this game. So if this was what was left with the players, you're going to just simply add up the values based on this place over here. So you'll say, okay, let's look at all of the yellows here. How many points do you have? And this guy would say, I got one point because I have two of them. And then uh, we'll go, okay, blue now. And I've got two of them, so that's going to give me one more point. And then I've got three malware, which is going to give me five. So five, six, and seven points. And this player would do the same thing as well. And then after that, you would tally up all your bonus victory points. Like this guy has a plus two bonus here. This player has a plus four. And I think he's got a plus two somewhere else right there. So he get a total of plus six. Then you're going to look at whoever has the most of these. In this case, it's the Grim. So he does. So he's going to get a plus six. And then finally, the last one is the ultimate collector here, who has the most comics. And he's got five, six, seven, and he's got five, six, seven. It's a tie, you'd split the points. But if one player had one more comic, not that one, <laughs> one more comic, then that player would get the extra four victory points. You tally up those scores, set them aside, and then go through another round of the game. And it would work the same way. You would take all the cards, even the ones you removed, shuffle them up, get rid of 24 cards, and then start another round. After three rounds, you'll tally up all of the round's points that you have, and the player who has the most points at the end of the third round is the winner of the game, Mint Condition Comics. Hopefully I explained that well enough for you. We'll come up, I'll give you a couple mm, critiques, uh, as well as some... Uh, basically uh, uh, statements of the rules and whatnot and then I will uh, let you go comics yeah this is a really interesting theme to a game I haven't played a game that involves comics I played a game like 
It involves trading card mechanics, Millennium Blades, where you're basically playing Magic the Gathering. But this one is different. This is a comic collector style game. It's interesting. I, I really like the theme of this game. And I'm going to talk about the artwork first. In this game, you have some really nice artwork. And I would say even better than some of the comics that exist today. I mean, with Grimm here, I wanted to immediately pick up this comic, whatever it was. It just looked really, really cool. Uh, there's, I think there's like six different pieces of artwork as far as the comics go. But for the comics that they are, for what there is, it's really nice. I really like them. A um, couple little critiques, I suppose, like Stellar and this comic here, the Japanese one. Both of these, I'm not sure if they're in a set singularly, so you can't trade another player because they're considered a set, or if you can. I wasn't specific with the rules there. Uh, the bonus round cards allow the game to change, and in some ways, if you collect the most comics, you're going to not want to push your way through to get better comics at the cost of players getting points. So there is some game-changing mechanics in the game. You've got these secret powers, and they all are fairly balanced in my opinion, uh, but I would probably kick Absorb Power out of a two-player game, the copying of another player's ability, because at times maybe that other player doesn't want to use their ability, and so that makes your ability useless, and then the secret powers ultimately don't have any purpose whatsoever whatsoever in a two-player game. Uh, the other thing I want to say is, for a lot of the games, it's interesting because you're getting to pull from either the first one, and if you don't, you give more, and then you can go to the next one. And there's definitely times where it's beneficial to do so. I actually haven't seen the stack get higher than four because at that point, that's a lot of comics to pass up and put a five down, but the players who get four definitely get uh, some bonuses. Not always, but a, a lot of times. Uh, this game here is a really nice set collection game. There's not a whole lot of cards in the game, but it functions very, very well. The flow is easy. I was able to play all throughout an entire three rounds. I never got bored. I was always entertained. And I played it at two, three, and even four players. And with a, sl a smaller player game, what's really interesting is because some of the cards are not going to be included in the comics. And that just means that other collectors have them. And so when you're looking for things like the Breakfast Club, and you notice there's only actually five in the entire stack of comics, that's because the rest of them have already been bought out by other collectors and the theme works very well even with trading with other players it's a nicer trading environment because you can trade one for one in a lot of cases and the comic shop is not as nice and it reminds me of trading in my magic cards or at least some of them to a comic shop oh it was brutal I lost I lost some money on that I'm sure well, they made some money I suppose but regardless it has that feel to the game I really really enjoyed mint condition comics it has a lot of nostalgia for me it's fun it's quick you can go and play one round all three you could play more than three rounds I don't see any reason why you couldn't or shouldn't and I think for the most of you who enjoy the idea of comics and collecting and trading comics uh, and want something that's gonna be light that's going to be gateway and have a little bit of strategy but not be too take that either you're only thinking is focused on what you've got and in general you're only going to be taking from other players who don't have a comics in a set uh I, I don't see a lot of negatives for this game maybe people might want to see more artwork or even more comics more abilities and whatnot i think that's all going to be nice to include maybe that'll be included in a stretch goal of some sort but i really really like this game i think for the most part people are going to enjoy this game as well and i think this game fits pretty much all audience of players definitely check out mint condition comics if this sounds like something interesting for you i had a blast and i always have to think would i back this game if i didn't have a million board games already and the answer for this one is yeah if it has the right price point this would be a pretty quick back for me because it's something i can take anywhere and have a lot of fun with and something very different from a straight up just take that style game it has a lot of nuance and it has quite a bit of feeling to the game even though for the most part all the games play very similarly uh, apart from the bonus rounds and the special abilities definitely check out down below on kickstarter if you want to back the game mint condition comics i really really enjoyed this one and i think you will too Thank you so much for watching another unfiltered board game review. If you enjoyed this game, go ahead and take a look at the link in the description to pick it up on Kickstarter, as well as taking a look at our YouTube channel here. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that notification bell button. It helps see all the latest Kickstarter stuff, and you can then support them if the game seems interesting to you. And yeah, check out the game Mint Condition Comics. Really, I, I love the artwork on this. I want you to make me, make the game, make the comic book grim, please. Or even malware, both of those. What do you, what do you think, Teddy? He, he, he definitely agrees. I, I just like that feel. I don't know. For some reason, this has got the nostalgia going on. I want to like go back into my storage unit and like dig up my comics and start reading them because of this little game. 
that's that's just really kind of cool uh, unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more we're giving away pax unplugged tickets for the next day or so if you want to go to pax Plug unplugged and you're in the area in philadelphia or you'd be willing to take the trip down which would happen december 6th go ahead and take a look at our website as well as go ahead and uh do the gels for fun giveaway that's got a couple more days on it as well we'll have some other giveaways and don't forget to take a look at our live stream every wednesday 7 30 p.m pst we give away games there we play games just like this one on the stream and in fact this one is likely to see a live play because I really enjoy this one and I want to play it with even more players than four. Uh, I think you guys will, will dig this one. If you want to see it played live, that's the place you can go. All right, enough of me prattling on. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to collecting and trading comics with you. And I look forward to going into my storage unit and, and getting some comics. In fact, that's where I'm going to go. Here, you, you talk to him, Teddy.